this is number 12 that was born and this one had some issues. So you can see it's got bug eyes and its name is Beaker. I don't know if Beaker's gonna live, but we're gonna try to make Beaker live. What's up with Beaker's eyes? So Beaker has fluid in his eyes and sometimes this is uh, just, you know, malfunction in the development of something for whatever reason. And uh, I'm still gonna give it a shot and try to save it. So the first thing is I got to get food into this guy. Like we got food into the other ones. Look at that. So, cute. so believe it or not, this little guy is actually dangerous. He's venomous as cute as this looks still venomous. And this is really microscopic. So this is going to be interesting. Whoa, what do you got here? This is milk frog. I'm going to milk frog. So I'm, I love you too. <laughs> Did you know if you smoke cigarettes and your body's polluted, all the poisons on your skin can go yeah. into this guy? Isn't he cute? So if I have cigarettes on my hands and then I touch my pet frog? Yeah, you can actually, you can kill it. I think uh, in theory, one cigarette butt is enough to pollute 10 gallons of water, making it uh, and hospitable for aquatic life. So these guys are highly, highly sensitive. And I love it so much. Just talking. I know you think I'm horrible. You should. Humans are really horrible. So you're in the middle of telling me about the scenting. So what I'm doing is I'm just, uh, I'm borrowing a little bit of smell and the taste of this little guy who doesn't really understand what I'm doing. But this is highly captive for many generations, successive generations. In. But look, he's doing a little bit of like you male. So sometimes you go and you try to amplex, you know, pseudo amplex. The males will go, er, 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 er. yep, he's doing it. So he's telling me I'm a boy. How would you do that? Because you're feeling the pseudo what? What I do is so amplexus, that means another male. So he jumps, this is a female, he'll jump on her and he gets his little arms right underneath their armpits and for this one to tell the other one I'm not a male because they're not going to rely on like scent or anything like that as soon as he jumps on it this guy's going to start clucking it's like he's doing it right now he's like tur, 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 right there he's clucking so he's telling me I'm a boy you got it wrong and then it goes off so this is this is the boy actually we breed these now I'm just kind of going through the motions I'm playing here so what I'm gonna to wanna to do so lightly, this is, I feel so, okay, what are we gonna do? So I just super, super light, see that? Yeah. Hi buddy. Oh, you got a little bit of strength? I know, I know, I gotta hang on. I know. What are you doing with that tail? I'm gonna to try to get that, oh goodness. Looks like you're spinning it. I am, I'm spinning it. So sometimes you just do that and you can put it in the mouth. I know this is, it's so small. It's, <laughs> it's freaking you out a little bit, isn't it? it? It is, it is. He's so little and just, essentially he's pretty fragile. He's a little lower mandible, it is shorter. I know, I know, I suck. Okay, so. Cut this. Oh, there's door scissors. Okay. Twist. A little bit. And then when I release, I'm going to start causing him to crawl forward in theory. Stop trying to. Nope, nope, nope. That's all right. Come on, buddy. So I'm going to push him. I'm going to push him around. No, no, no. Spit it up. Oh yeah, very much so. Straighten them out. What we want to do is prevent that. I don't know, can't get oh yeah, his body, his mid body is kind of hard. So we're gonna do that. Got little fangs though. Can you see that little fang right there? Mm -hmm. oh, pretty substantial. Look at that. Right there. That's a fang. That's a little. Oh, give me a good 
over. Okay, so hold on, come on. No, no, no. Gotta defeat that, gotta defeat that. No, no, no. Got a tail. That's so prehensile, this tail. So after about 10 minutes of staring at Beaker, gently rocking back and forth, trying to swallow his meal, he actually did it. So we're going to keep you guys updated because Beaker has a difficult road ahead of himself. He was born with a slight kink and fluid under his eyes. The good news is he couldn't have been born in a better place because Nerd is going to make sure that he grows up as healthy as possible and gets every little bit of health he can get. Not really breed a lot of venomous. Uh, I don't try to. Uh, obviously, when you're producing babies, you have to find enough people that can have them. So, one of the species I'm really uh, enthralled with would happen to be uh, Gaboon Kiss. It's Gaboon Vipers. I also like rhinoceros, like them quite a bit, and cobras. But right now, we actually have been trying to breed a couple of our Gaboons, and uh, I haven't really uh, ultrasounded or anything like that. So, I've kind of like been watching their behaviors. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good that we, we have reproductive effort occurring with this thing. So I'm gonna take her out. I think ultimately what I'd love to do is actually ultrasound her, see what's going on. Palpating them is, is a bit of a, a, a drag because obviously they're so dangerous. If you, you, know, you do something that they perceive as uh, predatory or something makes them very defensive. So we're just gonna take a look at her right now. I'm gonna judge just by her body weight to see what's going on. Hi. Oh gosh, you're so good. So these guys, very heavy body. Yes. And you want to be really careful when you're holding them because when I pick them, oh, she's so heavy. So, so heavy. You're going to want to back up when I take them. Okay, you're going. All right, you didn't get film that, you film that good? I yeah, I, I can get it from here, yeah. Uh, Jay, can you clear that table off? Yes. Yeah, all that's got to go. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So what I'm going to do, so a lot of her weight is now put on her neck and I don't think that's probably really comfortable. She happens to be a wonderfully sweet animal. So she's highly trusting of us. Long tongue flicks. Everything's great. She is not really full of food right now. And, uh, I, I think pretty confidently either she's laden with follicles so that's unfertilized ovum and if i do it right she'll continue to progress her follicular growth so they mature and then her luteinizing hormones which are being elevated will trigger an ovulation and the point of ovulation is the mature ovum being subjected to the sperm that she's kept inside and then they get fertilized from her ovaries into her overducts. They're gonna go out there and uh, it's live birth. So they're gonna be managed and fed and everything for the next 120 some odd days uh, in these little sheaths, which essentially is gonna be uh, kind of like a primitive egg, but it is live birth. So just like uh, boas and whatnot, it's uh, something that'd be really cool. And baby gaboons are super, super cute. She's very cute. Uh, everything is great. The way she's behaving, she's not being defensive. We're not getting the, the classic Gabunicus, uh, giant inflated huffy puff. Uh, she's just really cool. But her body, her condition uh, is definitely got me. I am no Gaboon Viper breeder. This is, this is all, you know, new stuff to me. I've bred puff adders and whatnot, but uh, Gaboons, this is just something I'm just, you know, kind of just fiddling with. But taking my basic uh, snake reproduction knowledge, I would say that we're definitely in the right uh, ballpark. Like I said, when I pick 
her up. If I just pick up all that weight on this little area, I'm now taking all of her weight and using it on that, you know, upward pressure. So I'm localizing all of that pressure on her. So that's going to actually probably cause some fear in her if I'm not careful because it's going to hurt her and it's not going to make her feel comfortable, especially being levitated in the air and the majority of your weight. So what I do here is hook. I like to get the hook and manage the first third. And what I'm doing, so right there, if I can, and what this does, this prevents her head from whipping around and getting to where her tail is. Not saying that she would do this, but you know, kind of just being aware and being smart. Never been bit by any venomous at all. And it's because I adhere to some basic fundamentals. Uh, it certainly helps when I have a lot of very nice socialized animals. We certainly see other people that are taking liberties and they're free handling their animals. And that's pretty much a testament to the socialization of their animals and they feel confident enough where they can do that. And in a lot of cases, it works without incident. But if I want to stay in the game for you know a long time and have all these animals, I need to represent myself a little bit in the world of uh, the venomous keepers because there's a lot of people that are really good about adhering to their tools and I don't want to act flagrant and stupid and embarrass them. So here, oh, she's so heavy. So, so now I would abandon this, rehook, but so let's see. I can just twirl around. This yeah, there we go. You got it. I want her back. So judging by that weight, you feel yeah, better. it's so this is where I can maybe get a quick little feel. So as she's going back in the cage, I'm gonna pout there. This is God, she's Yeah, she feels like she's loaded with, uh, I don't know, it actually kind of feels like they would be actually embryos, but there's large masses. So when you palpate them, what you're doing is generally trying to discern between follicles and there's different sizes of follicles from very small where you can't feel them to very large and more obvious. And then at some point when they ovulate and they move down towards their vent more so, they get soft and then when I'm palpating they're more like mush and certainly for like a you know a large live bearing animal it's you're going to have these sometimes discernible masses but they're going to be very soft so kind of like marshmallows that feels awfully like marshmallows so I would definitely say that we probably have a pregnant snake and that's really exciting uh, but the work's not done because now I have to manage the temperatures and if I do everything right, even if I actually do everything right, I can still fail and have stillborn babies. I can have unfertilized ovum. And uh, I think one of the, the easiest things to do, kaboom vipers and rhino vipers are a little bit sensitive to too much heat. People think, oh, they come from Africa, so they're gonna really be in a hot continent. Well, they actually live in the forest leaf litter and also in very wet areas. And these wet areas, they, they are living in a cooler, more constant temperature. So they're really, they're prone to dying if I overheat them. And a lot of times what they actually do, they, um, the blood vessels in the lung will rupture and they'll bleed from their mouth when they get too hot and it's uh, very tragic. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on! <laughs>